Don, do you think that owners, because Dan Snyder wrote a letter to the owners. He seemed to take the biggest issue from your piece as being, I didn't hire PIs. I'm not trying to gather information on you guys. I just want you to know that. Do you think that aspect of the story surprised other owners and made them fearful? That's a great question. Well, first of all, remember that uh, we spoke to lots of owners for that story, all on background. Some of the owners are sources for the fact that Dan Snyder says he has dirt on some of his fellow owners, on people in the league office, and on Commissioner Roger Goodell. I want to be really clear about what our story says. We report that Dan Snyder has told people he has this information. We never in the story say he has hired them. Mm. So in the letter yesterday to his fellow owners, Dan Snyder very, I think, carefully, with advice from lawyers, denied something our story never accused them of. We never accused them of hiring lawyers through his uh, uh, investigators through his law firm in New York. We said he says that. And by the way, guys, this is something that's gotten lost. One of our sources is an owner who heard it directly from Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder told an owner that he has dirt on Jerry Jones, and he also badmouthed Jerry Jones in that conversation. So Snyder is denying something that we didn't report, but some of the owners know it themselves right out of Dan Snyder's mouth. So he's writing a letter to them denying something we didn't, we didn't say. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they react to that because some of the owners were sources of ours for the story we did last Thursday. So knowing uh, that report that, you know, he's got dirt on Jerry and, and all that, why would Jerry and why has he continued to back him? Well, that's another – that's an excellent question. That's Thank another – That's another thing that I, you know, I'm not really sure Jerry is backing him. If you really parse what Jerry has said, and I know he was on the radio last Friday, and it sounded as if he was pushing back, you know, Jerry doesn't know how to say no comment, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you ask Jerry a question, and and you get uh, a lot of words. And if you really listen carefully to him, is he saying, I'm in Dan Snyder's corner? No. Is he saying, he's my guy, I'm going to defend him, he's done a great job as the owner of the Washington Commanders? No, he doesn't say anything like that. In fact, the best thing he said on the radio Friday, what I heard, is that he's had a long relationship with them, which is true. They've known each other since Dan bought the team in 1999 as the youngest owner at the age of 34. When he was asked at the owners' meetings about it again yesterday, Jerry sort of sloughed it off. Now, my sources close to Jerry, these are excellent sources, again told me last night, Jerry is not in Dan's corner, but he's keeping all of his options open. He wants to see the results of the Mary Jo White report. He's been talking to other owners about this, as I understand it. In owners' meetings, guys, he has not been giving adamant, enthusiastic defenses of Dan Snyder, as we said. The best thing he's been able to say is that Dan Snyder is trying. He's trying hard to get a stadium. He's trying hard to right the ship of the commander's organization but he's never as i as i understand it defends dan snyder's character or defends him from uh the allegations that have been made about sexual misconduct and the toxic workplace any of that stuff so i i know it's been portrayed in some of the follow-ups that that jerry has sort of um discounted or uh minimized uh, the sort of the things that we've reported but my understanding is uh our reporting is is right is correct and despite jerry's sort of you know again almost meandering ways of of addressing these questions publicly i have not heard him flatly say i'm supportive of dan snyder and i'm going to fight for him till the very end agreed he has not said that we had him on yesterday as well why would dan so but we have had jerry on for 10 years and it seems like he's been pretty close with Snyder. Snyder's been out of the public eye, then all of a sudden he appeared in Arlington for Cowboys Commanders. Why would Dan Snyder turn on Jerry now? That's a really good question. I don't know why Dan Snyder would say what he said to this one owner that he has dirt on Jerry uh, and badmouth him and say things about Jerry like all he wants to do is get in your pocket. You know, as you guys know, the most important thing to Jerry is loyalty. I mean, look at the grudge he's held on Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson's still not in the ring of honor all these years later, right, after promises and everything else. So, 
you know, that that bothered Jerry, as I understand it. Why Dan Snyder would do that, I, I can't get inside his head. Now, people around him who know him suggest that he's desperate. His back is against the wall. Jerry has been his main defender. Jerry has been his guy for all these years. They sit next to each other at owners' meetings. And so he is sensing that that support is slipping. And perhaps because of that, because he's so desperate, he is now turned on him. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd love to ask Dan Snyder that question. But if he loses Jerry, and we quote somebody in our story who uh, I, I believe is, is close enough to Jerry to be able to give us a good assessment of this, that, that Snyder's already lost Jerry. But if Snyder loses Jerry, then I don't see how he survives because of Jerry's influence. Now, we could talk about what happened at the owners' meeting uh, <laughs> you know, last night with, with the Roger Goodell contract, because, of course, Jerry was a lone uh, vote there, 31 to 1. Right. I mean, he's got a lot of influence, but not necessarily on Roger Goodell's uh, contract extension. We can discuss that. But, um, yeah, Snyder has relied on Jerry for a long time. Remember, on the Redskins' name, uh, Jerry told me in the summer of 2014 – when there was uh, a movement to change the name, that the owners were completely behind Snyder. And, for, and, and remember, Snyder said he would never change the name, and finally he did in 2020 after all the pressure that was brought to bear on him. Now Snyder is saying he's never going to sell the team. Well, he's already said one never that he broke, and, and this one could happen as well about selling the team if enough pressure is brought to bear, I believe. The great Don Van Nata from ESPN joining us on the Diamond Factory Hotline here on Sean and RJ. Don, do you have any idea what type of info Snyder may have on the other owners? Like what level of dirt we're talking? And then the the the, the second question is, there's a theory that these owners don't want to fire back and don't want to push him out because they don't want to unveil everyone's skeletons in the closets. What do you say to that theory? And do you know what type of dirt Snyder may have? I don't know what type of dirt because he has never really characterized it in the conversations he's had with people who have spoken with us. Remember, these are, I, I already mentioned, one of the sources is an owner that heard it from him, but it's also uh, team executives. You know, the league office, a source in the league office confirmed that they're aware uh, that Snyder has been telling people that he has dirt on owners. Uh, he keeps it vague. I, I don't know. I've heard rumors uh, about some of the dirt involving some of the people, but you know, we didn't publish any of that because it was rumors and we really couldn't confirm it. Um, now, to the other question about whether there's a fear among the owners um, that this is real or not. Look, this could be a bluff, right? This could be a bluff by Snyder. And, and again, he's a very desperate person. Uh, his back is against the wall. And, and that's what people have told us. And that's what we reported on Thursday. Um, and so this could be a bluff. But whether there are owners that have a fear to, to they don't want to pull the trigger uh, on somebody because something may come out. It, it's hard for me to determine that uh, in, in these discussions with people around the league. I, that, that I really am not sure of. Um, but, you know, I can tell you this, that I do know, and I just had a conversation this morning with somebody, you know, a very, very good source in league circles. There is, definitely conversations there are conversations going on about the fact that if they were to vote out snyder after what uh ursay said yesterday and put it on the table and finally was an owner putting his name to it that that would set a precedent that makes some owners uncomfortable because they have never done this they have never taken a vote to remove somebody as owner if there's an inevitable lawsuit that would follow snyder is very litigious as we know and that could cost a lot of money. And so there are conversations. Well, if we take that nuclear button option of voting out Snyder, um, you know, somebody could do that to me. Right. That's the thought that is going through some owners minds. And it's interesting that that actually works in Snyder's favor. Yeah. The, 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 the fear not of the dirt, but the fear of the precedent that could come around and get some of these other owners down the road. Do you have a feeling on whether they're going to ultimately vote him out or not? Well, I can tell you, you know, we reported in our story that I did with Seth Wickersham and Tisha Thompson last Thursday, we have somebody very close to Roger Goodell saying Goodell wants him out. Now, Goodell mm -hmm. doesn't have a vote, right? But Goodell said in June when he testified before the congressional committee, um, you know, he made it very clear that it, it, it takes 24 to do it. 
Uh, I asked a number of owners and people close to owners. Um, I don't know the exact number, six or seven, something like that. If the owner had a vote and voted today, and this is, you know, in the run up to the story that was published last week, would it be thumbs up or thumbs down on Snyder? Not a single person said thumbs up. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I, I, and, and I've said that before guys. And I, and I think, Again, will they go that route? I don't know. Will there be some other middle road? Uh, look, when the Mary Jo White investigation comes out, if it's really serious about this sexual misconduct allegation that was made by a commander's employee, that she was sexually assaulted by Dan Snyder on his plane, I know that that woman has spoken with Mary Jo White. We reported that for the first time last week. Uh, and and if that is really serious and and Mary Jo White, you know, concludes that there's something to that. Remember, Dan Snyder's already paid this woman $1.6 million and had her sign a non-disclosure agreement back in 2009. And then in the last year and a half, Snyder's lawyers tried to give her another seven-figure payment mm. for her not to speak to either Beth Wilkinson or Mary Jo White. And she flatly turned that down. We reported for the first time last week. If that report comes out and it's very serious, and you saw some comments yesterday in New York at the league meetings, uh, that that everybody's sort of waiting to see what Mary Jo White says, then I could imagine something where Roger Goodell does a two- to three-year suspension of Snyder and somebody goes to him, maybe it's even Jerry, and says, okay, now it's time to sell the team or you're going to get suspended for multiple years, a, you know, sort of a Steinbrenner-like suspension that's real, not the one that was given to him a year ago that was sort of a wink and a nod mm -hmm. by Roger Goodell to just step away from the team, which Snyder has thumbed his nose at. And by the way, has annoyed a lot of people in the league office, including Goodell, with the way Snyder has dealt with that suspension. He's looking at it as, as a joke. So I could see that as possibly being an outcome here. That's been suggested to me by some sources I've spoken to in the last few days. Don Van Nata joining us here on 105.3 The Fan. Uh, what, what happened between Jerry and Bob Kraft? Well, there was a discussion at the uh, owners only session of the league meetings yesterday in New York about extending Roger Goodell's contract. He's, uh, he's up after a five-year deal that he signed in 2017. And uh, you guys may remember back in 2017, uh, Jerry Jones, you know, fought hard on the contract uh, then. And so this, there's, there's a history here where Jerry feels that these massive salaries being paid by Roger need to be tied uh, very strictly to a bonus um, sort of plan and, and a way to look closely at that bonus plan where he hits, where Goodell hits certain business targets. It's, it's the way it was described to me for the story that we did last night is, you know, it's Jerry being concerned about good governance. Roger Goodell was paid $128 million in the last two years. $128 million in just two years, according to the New York Times. So from Jerry's perspective, it's that's a lot of money we're paying to this guy. Yes, the league is, is doing better than ever, but Jerry is concerned about that, but apparently the only one in the, in the room. So Kraft is not as concerned about it. He wasn't as Kraft wasn't as concerned about it back in 2017. Neither was Arthur Blank, who was the chairman of the compensation committee. And so they got into it. And as I understand it, uh, you know, uh, Kraft was sort of saying, sort of like, again, we're dealing with this again. And Jerry said to him, don't F with me. And Kraft said, excuse me. And then Jerry edited himself, I guess, turned it to a PG rating and said, don't mess with me. <laughs> and, uh, and despite that, guys, 31 to 1. This uh, this motion passed, meaning that the compensation committee is now going to begin negotiations with Goodell. Uh, and I think that Jerry wants a seat at that table. I know he wanted a seat at the table in 2017, and he wants it again now, uh, you know, to, to be able to make sure that these mammoth uh, salary packages that the NFL is paying Goodell are, are tied more strictly to performance and a, and a way to monitor that. So this isn't like a personal animosity going back to Zeke Elliott. This is, this is just overcompensation structure. Well, there was definitely animosity over the Zeke Elliott issue. Remember, guys, back in 2017, yeah. um, and we reported that. I, you know, Seth Wickersham and I reported that in the fall of 2017. You know, in a story I have it right here on my desk. The headline is Roger Goodell has a Jerry Jones problem, and nobody knows how it will end. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think there's, I think that that might be part of it. 
with Jerry. Uh, you know, Jerry's got a long memory, and, and, and that's, that's also something to sort of keep in mind as we hear his sort of his wishy-washy no comments on Dan Snyder, right? I mean, he, he knows that Dan Snyder has a file on him, and he knows that Dan Snyder badmouthed him to an owner, and, and so you know, we'll see what Jerry does with that information down the road. In the run-up in 2017 on Goodell, he was saying supportive. Jerry was saying supportive things about Goodell, while behind the scenes he was working real hard to make sure he didn't get another contract. So, uh, the the personal I I know that Kraft and Jerry are not only are they the two most powerful owners in the NFL. I think there is some some uh, rivalry there. Jerry beat Kraft to the Hall of Fame. That hurt Kraft. Believe me, that hurt Kraft, okay? Jerry won that one. And there's a lot of rivalry there, guys. And so, so yeah, is that possible that that don't mess with me, don't F with me? There's, there's some stuff between those guys, yeah. Um, but, but the way Jerry is viewing Goodell, I was told last night by people close to Jerry, it's not personal. They insist it's about... Uh, the contract and the structure of the new contract. Dom, what do you make of this Jerry Jones sexual assault allegation that hasn't been discussed a ton from 2018, uh, where, where Jerry allegedly kissed, forcibly kissed this woman in front of coaches, uh, teammates, and possibly even his wife? What, what do you make of that story? Well, I haven't. I have not reported on that story. I mean, I know it, it, it's it's out there. I know Amy Dash uh, wrote a piece about it, and a couple of other outlets have written about it. I mean, guys, quite candidly, because I've been so busy on Snyder, and you know, we had another Snyder follow up uh, yesterday. Uh, I really have. I, I really don't know enough about it. It's obviously a serious allegation, but beyond that, because I haven't reported, I really don't feel comfortable talking much about it. What would Jerry Jones say to you if he ran into you today? <laughs> uh, hey, Don. Uh, you know, you got some time for Johnny Walker Blue. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> so pleasant. He wouldn't be. Wouldn't you? Don't think he would be angry at you, ticked off at you? Why are you lying? He wouldn't be resentful. No, I, what I have found about Jerry, I've been a journalist, guys, for 35 years. I covered the Clinton White House. I was at the New York Times. I was a non-sports guy up until 2012. Uh, I've written about a lot of powerful people, written things that they didn't like. Jerry has the thickest skin of anybody I've met in my career. Uh, he just, it, he does not take it personally with, with journalists. He just knows it's part of the game. Uh, now he'll remember a slight by Jimmy Johnson, and I believe he'll remember a slight by Dan Snyder. But but no, anytime I've run into him, I saw him on the field uh, at AT and T Stadium uh, before a Sunday night game in 2019. Uh, you know, I was on the uh, debut uh, episode of the ESPN Daily podcast talking about Jerry, and I visited with him the night before. Uh, he couldn't have been nicer, uh, you know. And anytime I've needed to talk to him. Uh, he's available. Now, he was not available, and, and I think it was striking, to talk about Dan Snyder uh, for our story last Thursday. And I thought his no comment, because it's hard to get a no comment out of Jerry. Jerry will comment about just about anything, yeah. right, guys? You know that. Yeah. And for him to no comment me, I thought that silence was deafening. And yet I had sources around him, uh, and, and so did my colleagues, uh, that I think gave a a very fair, truthful depiction of where Jerry is right now when it comes to Dan Snyder. Last thing, Don, how much more is coming? Are you are you sitting on a lot more that you're going to be reporting on? Well, we always get tips, and um, we're certainly pursuing a number of them um, related to the NFL, uh, and and one and one in particular that's very intriguing that I've got to jump on some planes and chase in the next week or two here. So I think there is more coming. Uh, certainly on the Snyder story, it's not going anywhere. The owners are meeting again in December. The next shoe to drop is the Mary Jo White report. Uh, let's see how the NFL handles that. I don't think they're going to handle it the way, the same way they did the Beth, Beth Wilkinson matter, which, of course, there was no report. It was just an oral presentation made by Beth Wilkinson about Snyder uh, to Roger Goodell and to, and to Jeff Pash, the, the NFL general counsel. 
Then there's also the congressional report, and we're expecting that in the coming days as well. You know, the the congressional committee that's been investigating Snyder for more than a year is going to do its report. So, uh, you know, there's these investigations that are going to come out that the league uh, and the owners are going to consider uh, when it comes to Snyder's future. And um, and yeah, and and Dom, Dom, would you be worried if you were Jerry Jones today? Worried about what? Dot dot dot. I don't know. <laughs> Based upon what you know, would you be worried if you were Jerry Jones? Well, Jerry, I, I don't think, you know, I, I saw Jerry say about that, you know, when he was asked about what we reported on Friday and he says, I don't worry about that. I mean, I think he was talking about private investigators. <laughs> you know, there's so much has already come out about Jerry Jones. I mean, let's go back to the cheerleaders and the Dalrymple situation that we broke back in February. Uh, the 25 year old woman who claims that Jerry is her father. Uh, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know if I would be worried. I, I think I know what you're asking. You mean is there something that we're pursuing? I mean, we we're we're always pursuing stuff. Um, but I don't think Jerry scares easily. I really don't. Uh, he's 80 years old and uh, just turned 80, and I don't think he's. I don't think he scares easily. I think. I think his issue with Snyder again is. It, it, I think it's business related. Everything with Jerry comes down to business. Right. It just does. I mean, you know, I know he cares deeply about winning another Super Bowl, but when he's in that owner's room and he's looking at the NFL and he's told me this multiple times, it's about business. And right now, Snyder's franchise is a disgrace. It's dead last in revenue. And it's in one of the wealthiest places in America. I mean, it should be a top five franchise revenue producing. They can't get a new stadium. It, there's all sorts of problems. So I think those are are issues for Jerry that are going to outweigh uh, anything else.